everybody, it's Kelly. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you this beautiful hexagon amethyst necklace that I made using the Potomac Beads Whispers of Antiquity treasure box for May of 2024. What a gorgeous box. What an absolutely gorgeous box this month. So um, if you're not familiar with Potomac Beads, this is the treasure box. And um, there's 10 to 20 different packs of stash beads. Stash beads may include a new collection each month. Same products in multiple colorways. There's, and let me tell you, Potomac Beads, their um, YouTube channel, um, they have been putting up like three or four videos a week of um, tutorials and just what gorgeous things they're making. So um, the price monthly for this is $39.99. If you price it quarterly, it's $34.99. So you save $60 a year. And if you price it annually, it's only $29.99. So you save $120 a year. So if you really are into beading, it's it's totally worth it. You get such beautiful pieces. I will um, leave a link above so you can check out the unboxing for this month. I'll leave it above now. And uh, you uh, stay tuned and check out this necklace. <clears throat> okay, so to show you starting out how I made this hexagon pendant, I'm going to show you the steps for this. I used the round trio beads white iris pack of 50 and wait a minute I didn't put this in the wrong container did I no okay <laughs> and then I'm using the um check last bicones the black ones I'm using the root beer um light topaz ab80 miyuki seed beads and then I also, for the necklace, I pulled out some of their Miyuki seed beads, Duraco galvanized, the Eidos. Look at how it's like a total match with these. So I thought I'm gonna intertwine some of these when I get to the necklace part. And I'm gonna use some of the check pressed bead ma beads and mauve when I get to the necklace part. And I'm gonna use some of the crystal faceted rounds. I'm not gonna use those for a bit. So I'm gonna show you how I made this pendant. Now I have a number 10 beading needle and I have um, about a wingspan of beading thread and I'm also gonna be using this uh, beading cable by uh, Potomac Beads. So I think that's, oh, and then I have a couple crimp beads, crimp covers, lobster clasp, and a couple uh, jump rings. So. We're gonna get started out. So what I'm gonna do with these, now if you know these, um, the trio beads, they have three holes in them. So what I'm gonna use is I'm, when I start this first round here, I'm gonna use the hole, just the, one of the end holes. So we're gonna start out, let me see if I can show you. So you see how there's three holes right there? I'm gonna use the top one so you see how it goes in there like that. There's also a middle one. I'm gonna use the middle hole when I get to the actual necklace part. So I do one of those and then a black one. And then I do another one at the top. And then I do another black one. Okay, sorry, I got interrupted. So we do these and then we're gonna do another purple. So we're gonna do a total of three the purples and three of the blacks. So it's gonna leave it a little offset at first, but it's really cool the way it looks afterwards. Okay, so I'm bringing this all the way down now. So I'm leaving some tail, of course, and I'm going to hold this like this now I'm gonna go through this one more time, but I'm gonna make sure that I go through that same hole because when you're working with these trio beads like this, um, it's really easy to go end up going to the middle hole or something instead, and then the necklace is not laying right for you. So we got this, and we're going through this top one again, and then through here. Okay. So we're going all the way down like this. And I'm gonna bring this forward like that. 
So it's like this. And then I'm going to tie it. I'm left-handed, so tie it once like that. And then I'm going to do a surgeon's knot and I'm going to one and then two. Okay. So now I have this. So let me kind of get it in this position. Okay. So I have it like this. So now the next step is I'm going to take out of the second hole coming out, if you could see that right there, and I'm going to do five of the seed beads coming out and going into the second hole then. So first, you know what, first let me go through and let me um, reinforce this really quick. Oh. And just make sure, like I said, that you're going through the right hole. Yes. When I was working on this and practicing what I wanted to do, I went through the middle hole and I had to undo the whole thing and redo it. And I was not happy about that. <laughs> okay. So now we're going to do this. And then back over here and back to that bottom hole. And I really reinforced this a lot. So now I'm going to tie it one more time. One. Two. Now you can go and reinforce it. I'm just going to cut it because I'm filming this for time. It's easier. Okay. So now I'm having, I have it like this. So now I'm going to go. And I'm going to go up through to the second one there. Bring that all the way up like that. And now I'm going to do one, two, three, four, five seed beads. One, two, three, four, and five. And I'm going to go to the other second hole. Bring that up like that. So we see how it does that. And I'm going to do that again. One, two, three, four, five. And I'm going to go up to the second hole again. Like that. And then we're going to do it again. One, two, three, four, and five. And go up to the second hole again. And then I'm going to go through and reinforce all of these as well. And like I said, just make sure you go through the hole you're supposed to. I'm supposed to be going through the middle hole. Yeah, see, it's really easy to end up... Because the holes are really close together. These are really fun beads to work with. But I tell you, you really have to pay attention. So I'm just kind of reinforcing these. And then we're going to go to here. And then I'm going to go down here. And go down through the middle hole. And I'm going to come out and not go through any more of the seat beads. Okay. So. So now we did that. Okay. So now we, we did these six right here. Then we went and did those right here, the five. Now we're going to come up. I'm going to turn this around now. I'm going to go up to the top hole like this. And I'm going to do a seed bead, one of the trio beads, and a seed bead. And so I'm going to do a seed bead. And then now this trio bead you want to get on the bottom hole for this. 
but it'll be the top hole on the hexagon. And then I'm gonna go in through this, the third bead out of the five, which would be like the, the point that's kind of sticking out like that. And then we're gonna do it again. We're gonna do this. Now I like to set this down just to make sure that I get the right um, hole and like that. And then I'm gonna go through Wait, hold on one second. Let me make sure or something. Yes, okay. Okay, so I did that, and then I'm going to, through top like that. Oh, what did I just do? Oh, sorry about that. Sorry, I'm trying to... Uh, Now I'm gonna get this. Okay, there we go. I went the wrong way. Not paying attention. I'm gonna do seed bead. I could tell this is the third hole, the seed bead. You go up to the middle one. that and then a seed bead the third hole and another seed bead up to the top like that I'm trying to keep this in focus because sometimes I start sewing and before I know it I'm out of focus and you can't see and then I'm going to go in through that seed bead right there. Like that. And then I'm going to do one more seed bead. Purple. Seed bead. I'm going to go through there. And I'm just gonna kind of bring it up this way so that I can make sure everything is in place. Okay, so now I'm gonna go up one more time. And these new ones that I added on, I'm gonna be using the bottom hole. Because I'm just going back through the, um, the same hole. So that's gonna be the bottom hole right there. Okay, like that. And then we're gonna go through here again. And then back up. And the bottom hole. And then down here, and I'm just gonna keep going through this. You want this to, you know, be reinforced. Plus it helps it so it's not like a flimsy pendant, especially if you, like I said before, if you make your jewelry and you sell it, you want your jewelry to be made very well. You want somebody to buy it and enjoy it for years and years and years. Okay. Okay, so now I'm coming out of that bottom hole. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump up from the bottom hole to the top hole like that. Hold on. So I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna turn this around again. I'm gonna jump up to the top hole. So I'm like this and I'm gonna do a seed bead, a bicone, and a seed bead and then I'm gonna go up to the top hole there. So on this, the middle hole will be blank. This, this, and this. It's pretty easy to make. It's just a matter of just, you know, following 
I love when we get these beads and they, you know, they've got really weird shapes and different holes and stuff because you really can have so much fun. Like I always say it's like playing those little blocks when we were kids. Okay, so that and then the bicone and then this again. And it's got that. And then this bicone, this again. And this, and then the last one, this bicone, and this. And then we go up through the top again. And now I'm going to reinforce this. But one thing I'm going to show you for I go up. So when I get to see how it's like this, I'm going to put these eight seed beads on now. Or, you know what? No, no. I know what I wanted to do. Hold on one second. Where did it go? Um, oh, boy. Oh, here it is. Okay, a couple months ago, we got these bales. That's right. And I wanted to put the bale on. I didn't do it for this one. And then I remembered that we had the bale. Oh, wait. No, that's not going to work. Never mind. That's why I didn't put it on. Okay. Don't mind me. It's been a long day. <laughs> okay. So now I'm up here. Now I'm going to take eight of these seed beads. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's right. I was thinking something else. Okay. Now I'm going to go back in through the bicone and skip the seed bead. On the other side so it's just over the bicone oh, like this then I'm going to go up again one two three four five so I have five and I'm gonna go down the other three so I go through the eight again and then I go back through the bicone and then I start stringing it again. So I like to do it while I'm still reinforcing because I feel like it's it's stronger that way. So I went through it twice and then I just start going around. I was not sure what I was going to do with these beads today. and I started playing around with them and I'm like, oh, look how fun this is. You know, I did a couple other things and just kind of worked with them. Okay, now I'm going to go through and just do one little knot. And I'm going to go through, make sure that you stay on the top hole or it won't be hexagon anymore. I'm going to go through here. Now I'm going to do a double one here. One, two, pull that up, and then I'm going to go through this again. I'm going to go up through here, through that one, and then I'm going to go through the bicone over there, so this is nice and sturdy. I could just do these and make earrings too. I do have two of them, but I decided I'm gonna do a pendant. Maybe I'll make earrings to go with it. I'm not sure yet, I don't know. Yeah, I do have enough. Maybe I will make a pair of pendant earrings to go with it. I shall see. Okay, so here we have this. Look how pretty that is. I'm going to take my cutters. I'm going to cut that right there, and I'm going to put that to the side. So now I have this, and now I do need 
one more jump ring. Okay. Oh. So. Let me see here. So I'm going to take my bench in those pliers. I'm going to open this up and I'm going to put it I didn't open this enough. I like to use small jump rings so that you can't really see it, you know. Kind of like to hide them. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. There we go. And because you're going to be putting a wire on this, make sure that it's really closed well. Don't want to have any, uh, any gaps or anything that's going to can cause it to fall off. Okay, so now we have this, and for my um, my wire here, I have, let me see how much I have, I usually get like, oh, I get about 24 inches, because anybody who watches me regularly knows I like to fight with the cord. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to take some of these purple ones out. I was just going through, I have a container with all of my Potomac beads. So if I'm looking for something I want to use in a video that I got from a past box, it's great because I um I have them. Okay, so I'm gonna put that pendant aside. Now we're gonna use this pendant. I'm gonna string it through like that. Now I'm going to use the middle hole. I want to see if I might end up changing that and using one of the top holes and giving it a little lift. No, that works good. Okay. Hold on one second. I want to get... Okay, this jump ring I wanted to get where it's supposed to be. Okay. So here we have that. Now I'm going to get some of these pretty ones out. Okay. And then where's the crystals? Here's the crystals. Okay. So I like to do like big ones right around the front. Just for kind of like drama. Like a dramatic, yeah, like a dramatic entrance. And then these... Like that, and then I'm gonna go with these pearls again. And I'm gonna do the middle one. Let me see. It's like the the holes are so small. These are really um I mean you can use these for so many things. So look at that, look how pretty that looks. Now I'm gonna do a black bicone. And a black bicone. Let me get it through there. Like that. Then I'm going to do a root beer. A purple. And a root beer. I think that was called root beer. Yeah. I like this little AB finish on it. Look how pretty that is. Oh, I love that. And then I'm going to do another bicone. Let me grab some of these. Do another bicone, then like that, and then I'm gonna do the purple in the middle. Okay. Let me do the bicone. That one's not going through. I don't know if it's my cord. And then middle one. Look how pretty that's looking. Okay. So.
So now I'm going to do another black one. Like that. Another black one like that. Where is that? Here it is. Like that. Then we're going to do a B purple a B like that we're gonna go this way do an a B purple and an a B okay so now we're gonna take one two three four and we're gonna do so I'm going to make sure it's the middle. Okay, then we're going to do the middle. And so I'm doing this one backwards, not from the other one. And then that. And then the middle. And this one's going to be the middle. Oh, that one didn't work the black, where'd it go? Oh, there it is. <laughs> and the purple one, the middle one again. Okay, so this is nice drama to me. I call it drama. And then, so now I'm going to do a series of the seed beads and I'm gonna intertwine them. So I'm gonna do one, two, three, four, five, six, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay, so see, I have that. Now I'm going to do black one. Like that, and I'm going to do it again. I'm going to do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. Like that, and I'm going to put the next black one on. Like that. I'm going to do one more set of those. Let me get some more of these out. Okay. And I'll put links to all this stuff that I can below. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And I will put a link to the Potomac beads as well. Okay, so now I'm gonna to go to this side and I'm gonna do this over here. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 11, and then one of the black ones. Oh, wait, hold on. I meant to get this one for 11. Let me make sure I got. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, yes, there, do that again, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And the black one. Okay. And then the last one. Let me get a few more of these. Do this 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So now I'm going to put a black one on this one and on the other one. see how far it is up on my neck. Okay, it's almost there. Oh, I love this. Okay, so now I'm going to do one more of those patterns. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And then I'm going to do one, two, and three. Okay, so let's do this one more time now. Okay, I think I got enough. Let me see. We're going to do this. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Perfect. Okay, now I'm going to do three of these black ones. One, and this should fit around my neck. Two, and Let me hold this up. Oh, perfect. Oh, look at that. Look how pretty that is. Okay, so now we are going to close this up. And for those of you who've never watched me close up a next one, I do it a little different than other people. I've had a couple of people say, oh, you shouldn't do it like this and that. But it works for me. And I sell my jewelry. I've never had any problems. I have necklaces I've been wearing for years and I'm pretty rough on my jewelry. And I like um, closing my necklaces like this. So, let me see. Okay. I got that one. And let me, that one I'll leave there. Okay, so I'm gonna start with this side. Now, when you do the first side, it doesn't matter, you know, if you um, don't go all the way down because you're gonna, strengthen up the necklace. So I put the crimp cover over it first, then I put the crimp bead on like this. I go down about, this is about an inch, I go down about an inch and a half. And then I take my Ben Chino's pliers and I make sure the wire's right in the middle of the crimp bead. And I pull on it, nothing. Then I go and I take it and I feed it back through there and I pull it, I get these, I pull it so that it's flat in there like that and then I close that up. Okay. Oh. oh, and then I take my round nose pliers and I, right here, I just bend that just a teeny bit to make it more look, more like a question mark. Then I put, I put it wherever it goes the best in, like that, and then I close that. Then I just take this extra wire. Now, if you have real, real tiny beads, it might not fit on there. Then I take this, I'm going to cut this little corner because it was kind of frayed from the way it came off the thing. So then I just start working it through these. 
And I can get this through, two of these through the 11 O seed beads as well. So I end up leaving this on because you cannot tell. And I just think it really makes the necklace a lot um, stronger. Okay. So now I have that go all the way down like that. So you see how that's straight like that? And I hold my finger and I kind of bring that all the way down. So you see how that's like that. Let me move this. And then, oh, sorry. Then I kind of circle it so I know that there's no gaps in here. Then I take my other crimp cover. I open it up with my nails and I put this, put it through. And then I put that one all the way down. Because this is the other side of the necklace. Then I put the crimp bead all the way down. And then I hold it up like this so that I know that it's laying natural and with it being swirled like this you know it's not totally stiff and then I take my bent chain nose pliers put it inside the crimp cover and I just lift that crimp bead just a hair Let me make sure I got it okay and you just squeeze that like that I pull on this and it's not going anywhere. Then I start feeding it down. Feeding it down through as many beads until it pops out. Wow, it's going all the way down. Huh. I feel that in there. Sure, I got. There's two. There's two. There you go. Okay, usually it pops up. There we go. Now we're going to trim this up. Usually it comes out a little a little sooner. There we go. Oh, of course it's doing this because I'm filming. I usually don't have any problems with this. There we go. Okay. I usually don't have these problems. <laughs> okay. Here she comes in out after like four or five beads. Okay. And I close this up. Close this like that. Let me cut this. Okay. Then I'm going to take this jump ring. And I'm going to open it up, put it through the lobster glass. go and then I take my round nose pliers like this 
Bend that back just a little bit. Feed that on. And then I circle that. And here you have this really pretty hexagon amethyst necklace for Potomac beads. Whispers of Antiquity is this month's box. So I will leave links to everything below that I used. And like I said, I used these as well. And then I used a little bit of everything else. So I absolutely love the way this turned out. I'm probably going to just make another necklace. So I'll have two necklaces. Maybe I'll give them away as gifts or who knows. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I will leave um, Potomac Beads' uh, link below if you'd like to check out their website. And um, thank you, everyone, for watching. And stay tuned for the next video that I put up for you. I know you're really going to like it. And all of my information is below in the description. Please like, share, and subscribe my channel because when you like it, and you give it that thumbs up, it helps the algorithms so that other people will see the video, and it helps my channel. So you all have a great day, and stay tuned for the next video.